Hi everyone, this is Khaled from GNS3 Talk and in this uh, video we'll be looking at the 12th um, uh, ticket on the CCMP T-Shoot uh, questions. Uh, so what I'm going to do is really to uh, go into GNS3, open up the program, open up the uh, uh, the project file which is the 12 in this case, go to T-Shoot Alright, so as stated in multiple times before, we need to check what's in the ticket. Please pay so much attention to the description of the ticket as you go through it. Uh, here, for a peace of mind, is the problem doesn't seem to be in um, in the connectivity between client one and the web server. If you read the note, it says DSW one, which is this uh, this uh, uh, switch cannot ping uh, router two. Sorry, DSW1 and router 4, DSW1 and router 4 cannot ping router 2's, this is router 2, loopback interface. Okay, so there's a problem with the connectivity with the loopback interface, and this is an IP version, version 6 problem. Okay, so it cannot ping uh, IPv6, cannot ping router 2's IP version 6 loopback interface, or even 0, 0, 0, 0012. I don't think this is 0, 0, 0, 0012. It's supposed to be 1. 1, 0, 0012. So many zeros there. Alright, so the best thing to do is really I'm gonna go jump to router 2 to see what's on. What's, what's on it first? What sort of uh, IP addresses. Obviously, this is an IP version six problem. So instead of doing show IP uh, v6, uh, show IP interface brief, you go show IP v6 interface brief. All right. Um, you could see that is there has serial one zero have an IP address of okay. So link local addresses. Don't worry about these link local addresses. These are just local addresses f uh, defined for a, a certain domain, a certain um, broadcast domain. We usually use these IP addresses to communicate with the rest of the world. So uh, to, uh, 20, uh, 2026, 12.2. So 12.2, okay. So this is the interface dot 12, which connects to router 1. We just want, I'm just really trying to uh, understand what how things are connected, really. Uh, serial uh, 10.23, uh, which is, has 2026.11. Okay, so this is 1. 2026.1 okay all right so this 23 uh, connect router 2 to router 3 and there's a loopback okay so there's a loopback as well a version ipv6 loopback address now let me go to router 4 so it says like router dsw1 and router 4 so why can't why do i have to actually work on dsw1 what i could work on the router 4 and dig my th way through it so obviously the, the issue is between router 4 to router 3 to router 2 so router 4 and just to bring up the uh, Cisco show IPv6 uh, interface uh, brief All right. just to bring up the topology and have a look at the IPv6 topology because honestly I don't really pay that much attention to it so uh, DSW1 and router 4 connected via a rip ng router 4 connected to router 3 using the GRE tunnel this IP address and router 3 is connected to router 2 so it's just really a simple supposed to be a simple point-to-point uh, -point, uh, connection alright so router 4 uh, router 4 it's got a 2-1 26, th not 34, 26, 2, 1, which is 5300, zero, zero. okay, 2, 1, which is actually connected to DSW1. It's got a loopback, 4, which is fine. It's got a tunnel. If you uh, watched my first or second video for this CCMP2 shoot, uh, troubleshooting uh, uh, videos, uh, you, you might have you, yeah, you might have heard me saying something about tunnel 34 uh, or tunnel sorry being treated as an interface. So you could see these are interfaces are listed and tunnel 34 is listed as an interface as well. So tunnel 34, that's what we c is actually an IP version 4 tunnel, but we have configured a an IP version 6 uh, 
within it. So instead of configuring uh, which uh, ser this serial interface, instead of configuring serial interface 34 with a uh, um, with an IPv6, we create a tunnel, and then within that tunnel there is a an IPv6 within it. That's 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 about it. Now I'm gonna test the connectivity between router four and router three to see if it's actually up or not, and then I probably need to check out the uh, OSPF uh, adjacency as well. So I'm gonna go ping IPv6. So uh, 2026 2026 34 and it's one. Okay, so the connectivity seems to be fine. Show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. Okay, so OSPF adjacency is formed. So router 4 to router 3 seems to be up and running. Let me go to router 3. Again, if I bring, I bring up the logical diagram, router 3 should be should have an OSPF adjacency with router 4 and router 2. Okay, so we are at router 3 now. Enable. Uh, show IP OSPF. Actually, I'm going to go show IPv6 interface brief. Alright, so serial... Um, one slice zero dot twenty three serial one slash zero dot twenty three uh, twenty zero one two okay yep so uh, this serial number this serial uh, <laughs> serial interface actually uh, is uh, connected to router 2 so I'm just trying to figure out which one is which so uh, 2026 1 2 is actually 2026 1 uh, column 0 slash 122 and this is it you see 1 and router 3 has got the 2 part of it whereas router 2 has got the 1 part of it and uh, tunnel 34 is where it's actually router 3 is connected to router 4 and it's got a loopback address alright so everything seems to, uh, seems to be fine I'm going to test the connectivity between router 3 and router 2 we tested the connectivity between router 4 and router 3 so I'm gonna go ping IPv6 I don't think you can even you don't even have to put an IPv6 so I'm going to say ping 2026 and uh, 1 1 the connection seems to be up okay so the physical connectivity between router 3 and router 2 is fine I'm gonna check out the um, OSPF adjacency uh -huh. okay so it looks like that the OSPF adjacency there's a problem between router 3 and router 2 show run I don't know what section it is for the OSPF but probably it, it is because OSPF can also be configured within the interface so we don't really really want to restrict ourselves into the section of the OSPF now we said it's actually a, a section uh, so serial interface 10 slide to 23 so where is 23 here you go that's 23 so it's actually a point to point interface yep IP address is IP version 6 address is fine IP version 6 uh, OSPF 6 okay so it, it's pro it's a process 6 area 0 let me just configure, uh, confirm the configuration. So router 3 facing router 2 it's area 0 and it is OSPF version 3 obviously yep it is an IPv6 OSPF and autonomous system 6 or actually a process 6 so yes IPv6 OSPF 6 area 0 so this seems to be working fine. Alright let's jump to the router 2 show IP OSPF neighbor Okay, <laughs> it's actually show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. I was thinking maybe how come the adjacency seems to be up. All right, so it looks like that there is a a adjacency between router two and router one, but there is no adjacency between router two and router three. Uh, well, you can see router one here. So let's go into the configuration again of the interface, which is uh, this interface really, uh, 23 and see if there is anything uh, weird that it's not supposed to be there okay so which one which sub interface is it 12 no it's 23 so as I said 23 connects into the top one so whatever below the line connects to the top of the line here whatever below the line here connects to here 
that's that's the best I could do to uh, when I when I actually did this topology. All right, so 23 IPv6 address. Hmm. There's only an IPv6 address. There's no even an OSPF statement configured on that 23. Uh, let me go into the IP OSPF statement as well. And here, which is IPv6 OSPF, there's nothing configured either. So the reason that the adjacency is not really forming between router 2 and router 3 is really because the interface doesn't have, it doesn't even have an IPv6 uh, OSPF uh, instance configured on it. All right, so I'm gonna go configure it and see whether the adjacency would come up. Config T interface serial one dot zero slash uh, slash zero dot twenty three. You don't need to point to po point to point, but yeah, IPv six uh, OSPF. Which OSPF instance? This is you need to be very precise about the OSPF uh, instance or the process ID. Bring it back up. It's either you check out the diagram, which is in instance six in this case, area zero. Yeah, router two is facing router three, or you go into the router three itself and see that actually it is six zero so six area zero and i think that's that's about it the adjacency should form ah here we go so you could see that the ospf process six uh, from loading to full and the i'm going to go to the dsw1 loopback interface i'm going to check out the routing table first that's probably the proper way of doing it Some sort of a delay for some reason. Show IP v6 route. Okay, we're learning many IP addresses. It uh, it can be it can be very bit complicated. So uh, what's a loopback address? So th this one states that there's uh, an issue with the loopback interface of router two. So what's the loopback interface of router two? Uh, show IP v6 interface brief. Okay, so which fec zero two two two? I'm gonna go to router uh, DSW one. There you go. So uh, we are learning about it. So what I did is I just instead of just l l looking through all of these, I just do show IP route fec zero uh, double column two dot two, and it looks like the way I'm learning uh, forward through fast zero dot zero slash zero which is this fast Ethernet. So I'm going to really do is ping this oh. ping this one which is a loopback interface of um, of router 2 ok seems to be fine show IP interface show IP v6 interface brief I need to actually ping it from the uh, loopback interface of the switch S and source and from the loopback as well there you go so it looks like it is working now uh, the problem was with router 2 so the device that was causing the problem is router 2 the technology which was causing the problem is really a version an OSPF version um, uh, P version 6 OSPF instance issue which is the OSPF version uh, 3 I think they call it um, is it version 3 or version 6 OSPF and um, I think OSPF version 3 is actually the IPv6 just just to correct myself OSPF version 3 is the IP version 6 OSPF the uh, OSPF version 2 is the IP version 4 uh, OSPF so router 2 uh, router 2's interface, sub-interface uh, facing router 3 wasn't configured with the uh, IP or SPF instance 6 area 0. I hope this uh, troubleshooting video has been informative and I would like to thank you for watching.